wondering what it takes to get the attention of music supervisors? Our upcoming guest, Amanda Creek Thomas of Neophonic, answers that and much, much more. Stay tuned. Hi, it's Rich Ezra coming to you from Mubu TV. We're here live at the Muse Expo in Hollywood. This channel is devoted to artists, bands, musicians, and music industry executives of today and the future. We managed to catch up with music supervisor Amanda Krieg Thomas from Neophonic. Amanda, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You know, I wanted to ask you, since you started in the field of music supervision, there's been so much change, and I'm curious, can you talk about what some of the more dramatic changes have been within the field of music supervision and music licensing? Oh my gosh, well, um, I, you know, it's hard for me to say because I've been in so many different areas of it, I have to say. In my like 10 years or so of doing this, you know, I, I spent some time in a studio and I spent some time in unscripted TV and then studio film and now in scripted television. It's been hard to really like track massive changes because I've spent just like a little bit of time in each. So it's hard, it's been a little, I, it's hard for me to say like, oh, you know, scripted television has gone all the way from this to this because I've just been in so many, so many different things. I mean, one of the things, I mean, I have experienced budgets are kind of always changing. Um, you know, they've gone down in many ways um, and just the music, People have a harder time, I think, on the studio level investing investing in in music in in certain ways. Like I've I've been in a couple different companies where, um, you know, in a music department where it started when I started, there was sort of this you know music can like build revenue and grow and like let's put emphasis into it and then there's there was a shift and then it was like, well music is more of a service industry music is more service of our projects rather than than something that can really be your, a stream of revenue. I mean, I think everybody's sort of seen that in their own different ways in terms of like the change in soundtracks. Now soundtracks aren't as prevalent and are, are you know, much fewer and farther between, it, which is definitely not to say that there aren't, I mean, there are many successful soundtracks coming out right now, but it's just the dynamic has changed so much. And I think that um, in, in, in where I've seen that, like I said, is at the, on the studio level. When I've been at studios, I've watched a couple times where it was this emphasis on music and, and the way music can build revenue and grow the company and, and really be an addition, shifting to, like, it's strictly a service. It's strictly a service to our shows. And I, I do hope that that changes kind of back again mm -hmm. but um, you know I'm, I'm really fortunate right now to work on really amazing projects and and you know it, it be kind of in the middle of music being a really important part of it all um, but in terms of things that have changed I have seen that trend happen a couple times okay in terms of you know the shift from music as a revenue source to music purely as a service to mm -hmm. to shows you mentioned studios and you mentioned TV in, in, in that in that answer, and I'm curious, from your point of view as a supervisor, what are the major differences between working as a music supervisor on a film versus working music supervision in a TV show? Um, there are, you know, there are a lot. I mean, the big, I think the biggest difference is is the time frame. Yeah. So, you know, films, you know, you're maybe, you might be working on a film for a year, two years, sometimes three years. It depends on the film. And, you know, there's like, you know, things, there's some shifts, but there's kind of a finite number of spots, in that, song spots in that film. So maybe it's 10, maybe it's 15, maybe it's 20 or more if it's like a pitch perfect, but it's, it's still kind of like a finite number. And you're, you know, spread out over over this two or one or two year period in TV you're doing that like it's it's daily every week like you're getting a request and the editor is working on that episode right now and they're in the they're, they need that right now because they're they're finishing that episode in three days or like the cuts going out to the network tonight and so you get like and then you're also working on multiple episodes at once so you know one episode might have two things this next episode coming up is three things and then you know you're also shooting another episode and there's a song in that episode and you have to react to that very quickly so the turnaround time is really just 
so much faster in television. You just have to like react and react thoughtfully always and make sure you're doing your job. But it is really like the, the pace is, is, is so much different. And I know a lot of film supervisors who are like, oh, I would never do television just because your the expectation is that you're turning around music that fast and you're clearing music that fast and you're prepping on cameras that fast. And that can be, it can definitely be grueling in a way. I love it, and because the other flip side of that is things are airing much faster. So say you have a song in a movie, and that movie not, might not come out for two years. And then the song's out and it's now old, but you put it in when it was brand new. On television, something goes in and it could air next week. And you see that like gratification of like, I did that, or like, oh my gosh, now you know that song is, is out now, and like, oh, or, you know, whether it's a new song or an old song, it's just you get that gratification of seeing it out in the world so much faster and um, that's one of the reasons I love it but you know it, it, it's all because of that pace that's really just can be very insane okay. but it's wonderful in its own way now I, I want to ask you a personal question I, I read somewhere that you're writing a book on music supervision yes and I wondered if you could talk about that that's that's very exciting it is you know it's yeah. been um, a slog but in the best way you know I've I've kind of on and off had a blog since 2010, like, right. and I say on and off because, right, I just actually spoke with someone like this week who was like, did you notice your blog's offline? And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, no. <laughs> and, and my husband always says, he's like, well, you know, like you can't get too mad at yourself for not writing all the time because you're, do you're not writing all the time because you are music supervising and that's what you want to do and it's true. And so we kind of to tie it back to the book, like I started working on the book Oh my gosh, maybe in 2014 or 2015, and um, and it's it's really just very much like it's not even like you know a book on supervision or a book on publishing. It's just you know we've all been on these panels, just you know just like the one earlier where you know you get asked, do you listen to music by indie artists? How do people get you their music? Like what are you looking for? And you know how do we approach a supervisor? Like and those questions just come up a lot, a lot like on panel after panel after panel. The in emails, questions. the same questions, and they're very simple. And and you know, we get all these emails from people, and I, you know, among us supervisors, we're always like, oh my god, that person, they attached an MP3 to an email again, or like that link expired, and you just see that, and you want, and I always want to be like, you know, you get these emails from people where they clearly have no idea how we do our jobs, and like it's, you know, like check out my dope beats, and you're like. You know, and, and I want people to be successful and, be, you know, and we get these questions. And so all of that together, you know, we have these conversations so often, like, oh, if only that person just did this. And like we supervisors like tell all these things like among us. And so it's like, well, you know, like someone should just write that down and like put it out. And so some of my blog content is like that. And, you know, it's just, you know, years ago, it was like, well, what if we just like, what if I just wrote this all in a book? And because I've been so busy music supervising, it has taken a long time to finish. Um, but it's really just simple as that. Like, I'm not, a, I'm not a publisher, you know, I've never pitched music. Um, but it's just been, you know, it's just more about like, let's address all these. Is there a way we can just address all these questions? So it's, you know, rather than, it certainly touches on a lot of the key things we do with clearance process, us, um, you know, like how to submit music to us, um, you know, but it's, you know, like email best, you know, more on email best practices rather than the intricacies of music publishing. Right, right. You know, and, um, and uh, so, yeah, it, it's really close to being done. It's been really close to being done for a year now, but, um, you know, it's really just being formatted and it, about getting it out in the world. So, I, you know, I'm, this year is the plan, like, this year is going to be out in the world. It's just an ebook, something really simple, like for people who really just don't know, you know, who right. just are, who you know, come to events and don't know how to find people who pitch music or reach out to a publisher and about being represented and just really, really, really basic information. But I'm hoping it'll be out in the next, you know, few months great. this year, 20, you know, 2018. It's going to be the year, I hope. <laughs> well, great. It, it's interesting listening to you because I, I remember a supervisor on a, on a panel that I did like this a couple of years ago was asked that question and around, you know, the whole thing of, of all the issues that you're addressing. And she said something that I will never forget. She said, you know, here's the thing I need to say to all of you. She was talking to the audience. She said, if you can get 
if you can get that it is not about me finding a place for your music in my world, mm. but rather about you serving the needs of my television show or my film, you're 50% there. Yeah. If you can really get that on a cellular level, you're 50% there. Because it's not about me. Yeah. It's about who I'm serving, which yes. is my TV show yes. or my film. That's what it's about. And she says, I can't tell you how many times I get these emails. You know, can you, essentially, she paraphrased, can you find a place for my music in your world? It's like, no, I can't. Yeah. That's not my job. My job is to serve the needs of the motion picture or the television show that I'm working on. And what you need to do is you need to be in tune with what that television show 100%. is. Mm -hmm. She also said something which I thought was very interesting about the world of TV. She says that the cardinal, she says another music supervisor hipped her to that, that the cardinal rule with music supervision and television submissions, mm -hmm. she said the number one cardinal rule for her was never, ever, ever submit music for, to a supervisor for a television show that you don't watch. Yeah. She said that is a cardinal rule. Do not do it because she said you're like doing this, you know, yes. <laughs> and just throwing it into like the void, hoping is it the right thing? Is it the right tone? She says, if you're not willing to put the time and the energy into watching the show, I'm not interested in listening to your song that you think is right for my show. Well, and even now, like, there are so many ways to find out what music shows use. Watching them is obviously yes. a key, uh -huh. key component, but there's Tune Find, there's IMDb, there's Spotify playlists that people make, there's... You know, there's so many ways you can really find out what a, what a show uses. And it's, and so, you know, many people will say, again, to the point of like what stuff would go in the book, it's like research, do your research, yes. certainly all watch the you. show. And it is, it is really all there for you. And that's, you know, like when people, I get emails a lot of the time being like, I have the song that I, I, you know, it's dark. I feel like it'll be great for the Americans. But if you, if you just looked on TuneFind, again, you don't even need to spend the time to watch the show while you should. But, like, you could that easily find out that we only use music released prior to the time period that it's happening in. And right. because you've emailed me and you're like, oh, I feel like this would be perfect for the show, you've... You've already just demonstrated you haven't done the right research, and you you are just like winging it and trying to like, you know, appeal to something. It 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 because it, it is so easy. It's really right. easy to find out what what music shows are using and like and when go off base on that. Yeah. yeah, and when it's said and like. You know, on a show like The Americans, there's a lot of press about it. I mean, if it's an un unproven entity, if it's something that's not out yet, and you're just sort of, like, taking taking a guess based on a trailer, maybe, okay. But something that's been out for many seasons, or, you know, American Horror Story, it changes every season, like, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it can be in different time periods. So people are always like, oh, this is dark. I bet it's going to be great for American Horror Story. But I don't, I don't even know where season eight's going to be. Like, I don't know what I need for that yet. So how would you know what I need for that, you know? And so... You know, yeah, it's exactly like research is such a huge part in, in knowing what we're working on. And like I said on the panel, like right now, like Claws and Pose are both such heavy music shows. I'm all my like my days are just consumed with listening to music, you know, for those shows. And then I have other shows on top of that. But those two are just if, if it's not in that space for either of those shows, I'm, I'm probably not having a lot of time to listen to it. You know, and so do your research and find out like what what those are using. And Claws is in a second season show. Pose, there's a lot of press out starting to be like, find out what the what might be in that wheelhouse. And, and but that is what I'm listening to. And and if you email me and say, can you use this? Well, probably I can't because I'm listening in two very specific sounds right now for right. sure. Right. Yeah. As a music supervisor, what are how do I put this? As a music supervisor, what are the most important relationships for you to develop? Oh, um, you know, one of the things that I, I have worked really hard on since I started, and I think it served me really well, is, is I have really tried as much as I can um, to make good relationships with the people who are pitching me music. Um, I, 
um, have found it really, really valuable throughout the years to because I, I, you know, now I know enough people that I can remember like who people, you know, what catalogs people have that are really good, and like I have good enough relationships with them that when I'm in a bind or I need a favor for a filmmaker or what have you, I know who can, who will have my back on that, which makes me look good for my filmmakers, so hopefully they call me again the next time. Right. Um, and, and um, you know, I am always trying to meet new people and put, like, new faces to names. And, and that's not to say I'm, like, constantly using all the music because, you know, I may not have a need for that music at the moment, but it, it does help me, like, I'll, I, you know, to do a coffee and be like, what do you have? Like, what's your thing? And, like, especially friends of friends who come recommend it. I, I have always tried to make time when I have time to, to meet new people and like certain, like recently I've been really busy, it's been harder, but you know, I have a week free and I'll try to like say yes to that coffee. And like, I, I really have found my relationships with the people who are pitching me music really valuable. And that's part of honestly why I love music supervision because we are such a community. So it, because I have those relationships, it makes it like that much sweeter when I find a place for one of their songs, or I have that opportunity come up, and I'm like, I get to call a friend and say, like, I got this, like, let's do this, like, or, you know, whether whether it's a mighty or wherever the idea comes from, like, just the, that interaction, like, makes the job so fun, because I've, I have all these, you know, I really respect all the people who I, I work with and who help me out, and to, to have those connections and those interactions, like, it's one of the reasons I've, I really truly love music supervision is, is, is those relationships. And I mean, then of course it's, you know, on a very, you know, primal level, I guess, in a way, like, you know, it's essential to make relationships with directors and producers and post producers. And like, those are the jobs that, you know, those are the relationships that hopefully keep you employed and working and then getting to do that. But, um, you know, I've, I really, love and treasure my relationships with the people at the labels and publishers and the third party pitching companies and the music libraries and all of those that vast community that has sort of you know while a director might be a new relationship those people have been with me since i started you know and i've interacted with them at different companies and different iterations for 10 years now and those are consistent and they remain and are so valuable and so i, I really you know treasure those for sure Hey, Amanda, thank you so much for coming in and doing this. I really appreciate it. Of course, it. thank you. Thank you. Hey, this is Rich Ezra at Mobu TV. Thanks so much for watching this episode. We'd love to get your comments, so be sure to leave them below. And make sure that you like and share the video as well. If you like this video, or if you're new to Mubu TV, we'd love to have you subscribe. So be sure to hit the subscribe button below. And also, make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you can get notified by email every time we put out a new episode. And finally, we need to hear from you. We need to know what kinds of content and guests you're interested in at Mubu TV. So keep it tuned to your trusted source, Mubu TV. Music, business, television.